there is a fact that it is easier to add than to multiply numbers. For example, if you have to multiply 100,000 with 10,000, instead of doing this, you will just count up the numbers of zeros, then add those numbers and then you will write the answer 1 followed by that number of zeros. And from here, the idea of logarithm came in. The full credit for inventing the logarithm goes to John Napier. But at the same time, a watchmaker named Jost Burgi from Switzerland also came up with the same idea. He published his logarithm a little late than John Napier's logarithm. Hence, the inventor of logarithm is John Napier. John Napier and Josh Burgi had the same approach to the logarithms. But John Napier's logarithm were a little difficult to understand than the logarithms of Josh Burgi. And Josh Burgi's story is a little more interesting than John Napier's, so I want to talk about Josh Burgi. Josh Burgi was more than a watchmaker. He was also the instrument maker for the observatory there. He also helped the observatory with their mathematical calculation, like these. And without having a calculator, this was an immense amount of work and pretty frustrating. So he had an idea to make this immense work easy. So he changed the multiplication sign to the addition sign and find out the log. That time he called them the red numbers, but whatever, it's just a name. We call them logarithms. So let's see how logarithms work. And for understanding log, let's look at the example we did at the start. That was 1 followed by 5 zeros and 1 followed by 4 zeros is equal to 1 followed by 9 zeros. We can also write it as 10 raised to the power 5 multiply by 10 raised to the power 4 is equal to 10 raised to the power 9. So we just added the powers that is 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. So from here a very interesting thing comes up that if bases are same then the power adds and this is the foundation of logarithms. Now let's look at this 10 raised to the power 5. That is 10 raised to the power 5 is equal to 1 followed by 5 zeros. So now here is a base and here is its power and here is a answer. So now let's take them in a nomenclature way. Here is a base, right? Here is a power which is of the base that is P and here is a number that is answer. Now let's make a equal to in here. This is the most trickiest part so pay a little more attention. Here are three variables that is B P and N. Now we are going to convert it to log. So let's convert this to log. Now here is the log. Right? Now what happens is that the base that is 10 in here, 10, the base comes down to the log and 10 is the most common base for the log that is base 10 logarithm tables. A quick side note, John Napier used the base 1.0001. I am talking about the base 10. I am talking about the base 10 because it is more easy to understand and the most famous base for log. All the common logarithm tables like this are the base 10 logarithm tables. Now the base came down. I will put the base here. And there's another base here. Now the base came down. 
this comes down and this number n does not remain after the equal to this n comes in here and then the power which is p goes there and here is a equal to so log to the base 10 n is equal to p that means how much power the base will have to get the number n now understand it in the most easiest way that is Now I will write this in log that is log base 10 1 followed by 5 zeros is equal to 5. This is telling us that 10 will have 5 as the power to get this number. So this basically gives us the power of the base and then we will add those powers to get our answer so this is a series the first digit is 1 and then I multiply 10 each time so now we are gonna make a base 10 logarithm table of this that is the base is equal to 10 now think how much power 10 will have to get 1 that is 10 raised to the power 0 is equal to 1 so 0 here now think how much power 10 will have to get 10 that is 1 here here 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is showing the power and this is the log now we have our own logarithm table now let's see if we can use it or not so to test our logarithm table, let's multiply this and this using logarithm. So 1000 multiply by 10,000. You will say, oh, it's super easy. We will just add the zeros. But now we are going to use our logarithm table. So log base is 10. I won't write it because here so, 1000 multiply sign will change to plus log 10,000 so it's here now think we will think for this and for this we will use our logarithm table think how much power 10 will have to get 1000 you are right 3 now for this we will use logarithm table it's 4 now 3 plus 4 7 now we will go to 7 here so 7 has we are reversing the log now Six, seven. so our answer is right as we know 1 followed by 7 0 so see our logarithm table works and this is the most famous logarithm table that is log base 10 table so our logarithm table works so let's compare it with the real logarithm table that is the real logarithm base to the power 10 table i don't know you could see these values but you don't have to see this value i will just compare this and this in this table they started from 10 and in this table we have started from 1 they started from 10 and that is log 10 here it is log 10 is 0 here our log 10 is 1 so are we wrong no here log 10 is equal to 1.000 they have not written the 1 in here why i will show that later so they started from 10 and finished on 99 these are anti logarithms so why they did that in the next video i will show this logarithm table to you and why they did all this this is a very smart way of doing that because with this you can find logarithm of any we just completed our whole logarithm table in two pages in other way if we did the brute force then our logarithm table will be up to 10 to 20 big books so this is the smartest way and the shortest way of doing that so thanks for watching this video if this video helped you 
please click the subscribe button to watch more video like this. I am your friendly neighborhood Mathogenius and always remember that math is everything.